heart of European civilization is beating strong again. Paris is free. Four years of courage and hope have been answered, and a flood tide of jubilation has burst forth. The people of Paris, always great performers in history's drama, rose to meet their liberators. Once more, France held high her head. Unswerving victory marched proudly along the Champs-Élysées. In the weeks preceding, the Nazis had paid a frightful crippling price. The sector from Caen to the Seine had become a vast slaughterhouse of German military power. Forty days of torrential attacks by the Allied forces had torn the best of Hitler's armed might into shreds and tatters. From the vortex of that desolation, nothing emerged but dazed and wounded prisoners. First they appeared singly, then in small groups, and finally in great masses of beaten Nazis. With fateful justice, they found themselves in a prison camp of their own making, one intended for Frenchmen. Some cannot hide their happy relief at coming through alive. Others are stunned and bewildered. A 13-year-old boy has been a slave to the Nazis since they killed his parents in the Ukraine. Many of these men have not seen food for days. Meanwhile, the British clean up the town of Lisieux. It is a house-by-house house and street-by-street street assignment. Left without transport, small Nazi pockets snipe at the Allied advance. Great honor goes to the people of Schott, who made of their town a key center of resistance. At 19, this brave and beautiful girl is a veteran of partisan fighting. General Charles de Gaulle stopped here on his way to Paris. It was from this chateau, 25 miles from the capital, that de Gaulle directed the French armored divisions. France acclaims this man both as a soldier and symbol of a nation reborn. To the American columns, moving at blitz tempo, went the distinction of first crossing the Seine. Patton's thundering armor breached the river, both above and below Paris. They forced the Nazi panzer divisions into the capital into headlong flight. One American spearhead smashed into Paris after German treachery flouted the armistice reached for the Maquis. It crushed a Nazi screen before the city. A tank and machine gun skirmish was waged at the foot of the Eiffel Tower. Nazi prisoners mounted as the liberating forces attacked the German headquarters at the Chamber of Deputies. Resistance was short-lived, and another haul of prisoners was taken. Liberation has come at long last, and not even the bullets of snipers could mar this ecstasy of freedom. General Leclerc's armored forces rolled triumphantly into their beloved city. Many of these men have carried on the struggle since 1940. For four long years, they dreamed of this day. The dispossessed have come home again. Although present unofficially, 
It was fitting that these Tommies found their way into the city. Soon they were lost in the United Celebration. Spotlight fell brilliantly on General de Gaulle, the he set foot in Paris. With his presence, Parisian joy was replete. <laughs> to him was given the honor of rekindling the everlasting flame at the Arc de Triomphe. Four years ago, de Gaulle was distinguished only as an efficient officer, a soldier who knew the art of tank warfare. His were the only French armored units who beat the German Panzer divisions in the battles of 1940. Today, his name rings thrillingly on the tongue of a Frenchman. In his name, the free French forces fought mightily at Bir Hakim. And today, the name de Gaulle is a clarion call to the resurgent citizens of eternal France. <laughs> The largest square in the world, the Place de la Concorde, swells with its largest audience to greet this leader. De Gaulle's official welcome to the capital actually came somewhat later in the day at the Hotel de Ville. It was here that snipers fired into the crowds. There was a brief carnival of chaos as the troops returned the fire. to increase the fervor of the people and sharpen their cry for liberty. Once more, colors of France fly from the Arc de Triomphe. The week that saw Paris liberated was the brightest to date for the Allies, the blackest for the forces of Nazi tyranny. Like renaissance France, all of Europe will soon march into the bright light of liberty and freedom. Mm -hmm.